I've been practicing scales all morning. My hands ache. Let's hold up some books. <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm Roxy and this is Roxy Diaz. Today I bring you a TBRM, which is a concept I saw on Twitter and I loved, a to be read maybe. And I thought that's so accurate and speaks to my soul. So here it is. Today is my TBRM for the History Challenge, which is a two week long readathon hosted by Emma, Jenny and Justin. And I will link their announcements down below. They are all wonderful booktubers, so go check them out. Encouraging you to pick up more history. It has both fiction and non-fiction challenges, 16 challenges that are more like prompts or ideas. You can double up on them and try to complete them all, but you can also just feel inspired by them, especially if you don't read too much history related nonfiction. It's a good idea to sort of spark your interests. My new method is just gather all the books that I think I am interested in maybe reading during those two weeks, knowing full well that I won't get to all of them. Sometimes I will do an overly ambitious TBR and though I know I can't complete it, I kind of low-key hope I can. This is not the case, this is completely unrealistic, especially with everything else that I'll be reading and I'm going to be working as a TA this semester, so it's very much possible that I'll end up reading like two or three of these. But I still wanted to show them to you, that way you can kind of know where my headspace is history-wise right now and also maybe suggest which ones you would be interested in seeing reviewed. So I am going to see which of these I read and then I'll match it to the challenges that I completed based on what I read. I link all the info down below so you can participate and you can check out the challenges and get inspired as I said. Okay, let's begin. Very eclectic, although I think you'll see a theme. Yeah, there is a theme. The theme is bookish. So first I have the first volume of The Social History of Art by Arnold Hauser. According to this book, the original was published in English. I am not exactly sure because I know the author is Hungarian, so I'm not exactly sure. Maybe this is translated from the English translation, which is not great, but you know, it is what it is. So this is a classic of sorts of social history. You know, I love me some really context based history of all types of art and literature. I peeked at the list of contents and it sounds so interesting. Also because one of the challenges is about ancient history and although this does get to Baroque era, it's mostly prehistorical and then ancient and the development up to Baroque. So I think this is a very good book for that prompt. Now look at that size though, it is a chunker. So I think if I pick this up, I most likely won't finish it in two weeks. Then I have A Brief History of the Bodleian Library in Oxford by Mary Clappinson. Yeah, I love Oxford. I love the Bodleian Library. I've paid for the tour and like hang out at the cafe and I've seen the exhibitions and I just love it so much. So the second time actually I was there, I picked this up just to find out. I love, also, you know, I love my history of buildings and universities and institutions. I just so into that. It's such a nerdy niche bookworm thing to love, but yeah, I really, I really, I'm excited for that one. Then one that has a lot of chances because it's a micro history and that's one of the challenges. And also, you know, I love my micro histories. So this is A History of the World in Six Classes by Tom Standage. I think I hold this. I might be lying. I got this in Mexico and I traveled to a very specific little beach called Puerto Morelos, where they had this amazing second-hand bookstore in English. The owners are very friendly and they are really cool people. And there I found this. Yeah, this is what it says on the tin. A history of the world in six glasses, which are a beverage actually. Wine, tea, coffee, beer, and scotch maybe? Whiskey? Yeah. Fascinating. Then the only fiction book on this list, because one of the challenges is about historical fiction, is The Greats by Sylvain Proudhon, translated by Jessica Moore. This is set in the 70s, it's about a band and I think the aftermath. I am so excited. I know people think of historical fiction as something that has to take place like a hundred years ago, but I think the official contest accepted definition is more than 50% takes place more than 50 years or like 70 years. So if it's 50, I'm good. If it's 70, uh, kind of iffy, but I don't care. I want to read this. 
Then I have Born a Crime by Trevor Noah, Stories from a South African Childhood. This is also for my Curious Adventure Challenge, so I'm very, very excited about that. I really like Trevor Noah. I don't know tons about him, but I know he was born in South Africa while apartheid rules were still in place. And I think one of his parents is white and the other is black and that was illegal at the time. I've heard nothing but great things, although I've been told that the sections that are more current are not as tightly put together. I think there is an issue of perspective there, of course, that he tries a bit to be too funny at times instead of completely opening up, but that still it's a super powerful and well done memoir, so I'm very excited about this. Then. Sharp by Michelle Dean and the subtitle of this is The Women Who Made an Art of Having an Opinion. This is a sort of collective biography and you know I love my collective biographies. It starts with Dorothy Parker. How could I not like, you know, I, I don't know, I've talked about Dorothy Parker here I think. You know I love Dorothy Parker, right? So we have Mary McCarthy, Hannah Arendt, Susan Sontag, Joan Didion, so many great names. And it talks about their context, their writing, their response. It's all that I love to read. I also love that if you see the contents here, there are some that are overlapped. So like for example, chapter six is Parker and Arendt, and the chapter seven is Arendt and McCarthy. And I think that's really interesting to consider that influence and that dialogue between these amazing women. One that I'm so looking forward to, but I honestly don't know how likely it is I'll get to this right now. But if I wanna feel very angry, I think I will read this. So this is Trainwreck by Sadie Doyle. The women we love to hate, mock and fear and why. Shout out to Dani because she um, gave it to me after she read it, she really enjoyed it. It's about how we love to see women as train wrecks. We are so fascinated by their woes, even more so than their successes. From Mary Wollstonecraft to Charlotte Bronte, Billie Holiday, Sylvia Plath, of course, and even Hillary Clinton. So yeah, I think this is a bit more sociological studies than straight up history, but it is historic, so I think it counts. Oh, then I have a Spanish edition of uh, Yuval Noah Harari's 21st Centuries for the 20. 21st, le 21 lessons for the 21st century. I can't speak today. My dad just read this and he said it was amazing. I have not read Sapiens or Homo Deus just yet. I want to, it's just that I don't have them here. But I'm starting with this. We got this like a couple months ago during quarantine. I am not exactly sure what the central theme is beyond the title. I think it has to do with reckoning with history and how to move forward using history as a guide. And I'm always fascinated by that. One that I absolutely have to get to, maybe not in those two weeks, but definitely for the first week of September or so, because I'm reviewing it for the, the podcast that I do in Spanish. A Brief History of Drunkenness by Mark Forsyth. This is also an edition in Spanish. When I wrap them up, I'm going to name the translators. Even though you might not care, you know, I think it's important, but this is sealed and I'm not going to open it just yet. So this is very, very brief. It honors its name. I'm curious. I love to drink, <laughs> so. That sounds so wrong. Also, I'm very curious to just see the approach because for such a short book, there's so many different routes this can take that I'm curious. Finally, oh, this I'm going to start even if I know I can't finish because oh, it's Sylvia Beach and the Lost Generation, A History of Literary Paris in the 20s and 30s by Noel Riley Fitch. I mean, and it's a Norton book. And I remember this was kind of pricey when I got it. And you can see, I even got it laminated. So it will endure many annotations and many comments. You know, I love like literary 20s. I love Sylvia Beach. I love that whole scene. I'm basic like that. So yeah, I'm super excited. Okay, that's what I'm reading. It's not as diverse I usually go. If you notice like a lot of bookish things, a lot of women in there, I think that's great. I'm not complaining. Of course, I love it. But yeah, in the future I would like to read more diversely history wise however my priority for now is reading my books that I've accumulated in the past years <laughs> so that's what I have to work with right now I'm so excited thank you for hosting this I am going to film a wrap-up of course and I'm thinking maybe a recommendation for 
video? I don't know, because if I'm too busy, I'll just leave my recommendations for nonfiction November. We'll see. Let me know if you're joining and if you're joining, what are you reading? I'm super excited. Just join, read at least one nonfiction history book. There's a history book on every topic you can imagine probably. So see you next time. Oh, like and subscribe, of course. <laughs> Bye.